To achieve air superiority in the past, each nation tried to develop one fighter to meet the total tactical requirements of that time. But no single aircraft was ever completely successful. A fighter great for patrolling the trenches in World War I, for example, or another that made its mark escorting bombers, were obviously not the kind of fighters to be used in another time when the mission was control of the sky over an entire continent. As new threats and new technologies evolved over the years, so did performance requirements for fighter aircraft, from Grumman Cat fighters during World War II to the F-9F Panther in Korea, the Navy's first jet fighter to see combat. The F-10F Jaguar, a cat ahead of its time, was the first fighter with a variable sweep wing, a concept which was to pay off 25 years later. In between, Grumman designed and built the F-11 Tiger, a longtime favorite of the Navy's Blue Angels, and the Super Tiger, a Mach 2 version which set a world's altitude record. Each of these fighters was designed to meet the threat of its day. But what of today, the late 70s and 80s? Today, long range, agility, heavy firepower, and mission versatility are essential to dominating the total air combat environment. And only one aircraft, the F-14 Tomcat, has the means to put it all together. The United States is being challenged around the globe by a growing Soviet Navy, which now includes its first aircraft carrier, supported by anti-ship missile carrying aircraft, sophisticated anti-aircraft systems, high performance fighters, and supersonic bombers like the Blinder and the newer swing wing backfire. Both armed with long range anti-ship missiles. And then there are the fighters. 15 or 20 years ago, Russian fighters were lightweight and short-legged, designed for defense with minimal weapon systems. They were used only when weather or the element of surprise was on their side. As the tactical situation changed, so did the Russian fighters. The first with long-range all-weather capability was the Fiddler, which carried radar-guided missiles. The Fiddler was followed by the Foxbat, a Mach 3 high-altitude fighter, also armed with guided air-to-air -air missiles and a look-down, shoot-down fire control system. The trend towards swing-wing fighters is evidenced by the Flogger and the latest Russian fighter, the Fencer, which can stand off, locate targets, and fire away with long-range guided missiles. And finally, there is the Soviet long-range cruise missile, launched and guided from aircraft or ocean-going ships. This, then, is the threat. And the F-14 Tomcat is the only fighter, now or projected, that has demonstrated the ability to counter it. With its all nine weapon control system, the F-14 can track up to 24 targets at ranges in excess of 100 miles and guides six Phoenix missiles at six different targets at the same time. It can destroy targets in an electronically jammed environment at any altitude and without ever seeing them. Without the F-14 AUG-9 system, the Navy would require 75% more fighters for fleet air defense. The AUG-9 provides high altitude target interception and look-down, shoot-down performance for intercepting low-altitude targets as well. Phoenix missiles fired from 10,000 feet, for example, have scored lethal hits on targets flying just 50 feet above the surface of the water to avoid radar detection. In addition to the long-range Phoenix, the AUG-9 launches short-range Sidewinder and medium-range Sparrow missiles and can carry a mix of all three on the same mission. 
giving the F-14 total air superiority. And there is yet one more weapon at its disposal. For close-in air combat, a 20 millimeter cannon capable of firing up to 6,000 rounds a minute. A very useful weapon when the F-14 takes to dogfighting. With a variable swing wing that sweeps automatically with changes in airspeed, the Tomcat has the tight turning ability to outmaneuver other fighters in closest combat. In such engagements, keeping track of the enemy is the key to staying alive. Here, the F-14 has a big advantage with its two-man crew to divide responsibilities and a cockpit designed for maximum visibility. In training exercises, the F-14 has faced a variety of opponents, each selected because of its dynamic maneuvering capabilities or similarity to known enemy type fighters. And the results have always been the same. In one-on-one -on -one or multiple aircraft engagements, where they are outnumbered by as many as four to one, the Tomcat consistently comes out on top. Now fully operational, F-14 squadrons are deployed with the 7th Fleet in the Pacific and with the 6th Fleet in the Mediterranean. During fleet operations, F-14 squadrons have performed exceedingly well, with the Navy officially acknowledging that the Tomcat had the best initial deployment of any tactical aircraft to go to sea. Subsequent cruisers have seen the F-14 steal the show during a number of joint exercises with NATO forces, particularly when the aircraft was teamed up with the E-2C. The early warning Hawkeye, operating over land and sea, detected enemy fighters and directed Tomcats to head them off. During one intensive exercise, not a single strike aircraft was able to penetrate the F-14 E-2C defense. As part of the continuing development of the F-14, the Navy is evaluating an advanced technology engine for a super Tomcat. Greater thrust and acceleration in this B version of the aircraft would pay off in improved dash capability, climb rates, and short field performance. An air superiority fighter, by its very nature, must be able to fulfill a number of roles in a superior way. Today, to counter the impressive array of Soviet weapon systems, this kind of superiority means fleet defense against missiles and aircraft, surface ships and submarines. It means fighter escort, target and barrier patrol, interdiction, and dogfighting. It means suitability for land-based as well as carrier operations. It means a total fighter, the F-14 Tomcat. <laughs>